Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, Guac. Persona 3, Reload, Guac. Unicorn Overlord, Guac. Pizza Tower, mmm, we have never been so back. Game of the Year once again. It's funny. I like how as soon as the game got a big update, I got many messages telling me to do a follow-up video, like... Glad to hear my Pizza Tower videos are still in people's minds, and you know, I'm not doing this out of obligation. I'm doing this because I really want to, yeah! Even a whole year later, Pizza Tower is still a game I think very highly of. Actually, my already positive thoughts on it have only been getting more positive. It's insane how perfectly crafted this game is. From the level design, the sense of speed, the incredible challenge, tons of memorable set pieces, and the amount of personality it has is insane. I know that we all say that there's no perfect video game, but I genuinely think Pizza Tower is an exception to that. It has zero flaws and it excels at everything it does. And you know what the craziest part is? Somehow it managed to get even better! One year after its release, we were all blessed with the noise update. We all knew this was gonna come out eventually. Many mods even tried to bring the noise to the game ahead of time. But nothing, nothing could have prepared us to how excellent the official product is. And this update was possible thanks to the intervention of Homer Simpson. That's not an out-of-pocket comment, that's an actual fact. If you know, you know. When you hear about a platformer having different playable characters, you'll probably think about reskins or very small stuff, such as some minor differences to the physics, or even one or two special moves that change the experience. And well, technically speaking, that's what the noise kinda is, but he's also much more than that. His mere existence changes Pizza Tower in a way you couldn't have imagined. First of all, what do we know about this character? Well, above all else, he's Mexican. Therefore, he's just like me. The noise is a silly bastard character, one that explodes with so much energy in everything he does. He's mischievous, childish, and even a cheater, not being afraid to do whatever is necessary just to get an advantage. And on top of that, he also has a very strong comedic effect. He's basically a Looney Tunes character. And all of this personality is injected into the core of Pizza Tower, almost making it feel like a completely new game. Let's start with the gameplay. A friend of mine basically put it like this. If Pepino makes you feel like a feral animal, the noise makes you feel like a rabid beast. The thing that defines him the most is that he never, ever stops. The core mechanics and rules of the game remain largely the same, but the noise puts his own twist on things. Literally. The dive maneuver has been replaced with a spin attack. Not only does this damage enemies on contact, but unlike Pepino, who always dives in an angle, this one makes the noise go straight down, giving him much more vertical control without sacrificing a lot of momentum. And the coolest part about this is that as soon as you end up using your spin attack, you can redirect the noise to any direction you want, keeping the flow going. You still have a drifting maneuver, but mastering the spin attack is pretty much mandatory to get those P ranks. The other big difference between Pepino and the Noise is that the latter lacks a traditional wall run. Instead, whenever the Noise runs into a wall, he will bounce off of it. You can continue climbing for a little bit as soon as you dash into it, but unlike Pepino, the Noise is incapable of climbing the tallest walls in the game. So what do you do now? Well. What if I tell you that the noise has access to the super jump whenever he wants? Yeah! And not just that, he has better control than Pepino while pulling it off and can cancel it way faster. This technique isn't just awesome for levels like Bloodsauce Dungeon or Refrigerator, Refrigerator, Freezerator. In general, the noise's moveset lets you get away with so many things, it's unreal. You can completely trivialize many sections of the levels and even some secret rooms. Yet, it doesn't stop there. The coolest part about playing as the noise is how he subverts your expectations of Pizza Tower. Since he's basically New Game Plus, when you play a level, you already have an idea of what's coming. What transformations you'll play, what enemies to expect, how the bosses will fight you. Well, even if these things remain mostly the same, the noise will always find a way to surprise you. All of Pepino's transformations are here. But just because they're the same powers, it doesn't mean that the noise will use them in the same way. 
They all functionally do what they are supposed to do, but the noise does some changes to them that, yeah, they're small, but they are enough to change your experience with a level. For example, remember how in my Pizza Tower level ranking I put Crosco in second place? Well, the noise made me dislike the barrel transformation a tiny bit here. He's so stupidly fast, and instead of bouncing off the walls like Pepino does, he just runs up them. There are moments where this helps, but fighting muscle memory and trying to get used to the new speed did screw me up a few times. On the other side of the coin, Ancient Cheese was actually more enjoyable for me this time around, because instead of throwing a bomb in an awkward arc that ruined my P-ranks many times, the noise now has to touch an enemy to make it explode, that was way better in my opinion. And that, on top of the noise, having better vertical movement made me appreciate this level a whole lot more. And it's not just the transformations themselves, some levels outright change to adjust to the noise's antics, the most notable examples being Non Forest and Pig City, where Gustavo and Brick have been completely replaced with, you guessed it, the noise. And it's insane how good he plays here! The levels are the same, but the faster movement makes them feel like a whole new experience. Once again, remember in my level ranking video where I put Pig City in first place? Honestly, if I could put a ranking above number one, Pig City will be right there, it's so damn good! It doesn't matter if you play this level with Pepino, Gustavo or The Noise, this stage remains immaculate! Other levels take a different approach. In Refrigerator, Refrigerator, Freezerator, originally, you had to get to the end of the level to find Satan's Choice Pizza. This was amazing because it was a moment that made you feel powerful and invincible. But now, as soon as the level starts, the noise decides to drink a whole can of gasoline and he gets the power from the get-go. This was a huge game changer because you can basically access areas that are only supposed to be available during the escape sequence. Oh, so what's the point of getting Satan's Choice Pizza then? Well, it gives you back your invincibility, but also summons fireballs that follow enemies, it's so cathartic! However, not all changes are winners. Personally, Don't Make a Sound and War were less enjoyable for me this time around, because Pepino's shotgun was replaced with the Noise's Gatling gun that he was supposed to use in his battle before Noiset beat him up. As cool as it is to see this weapon in action, gameplay-wise, it's not my thing, honestly. I don't mind doing small pauses with the shotgun because it's fast and one blast covers a wide range. While the Gatling gun, you need to make your stops last longer in order to make your shots effective. And the weapon's ground pound is way worse for me. It lasts too long and it makes the noise move a lot. It actually screwed me up a lot of times in war. The bosses also went through some noticeable changes, because during these encounters, the noise loses his graph and instead uses the bouncing bombs from his own battle. And this applies to all the encounters, so say goodbye to the gun from the vigilante and pizza head. This, again, can make certain encounters a bit harder since the bombs keep you in place while you set them up. And losing the graph also means losing a useful evasive maneuver. Peppermint remains the same in terms of difficulty. Fake Pepino is definitely harder. And the second phase of the final boss is another nightmare! The Vigilante is the funnest of them all, because if you time your bombs right, you can make this encounter a total joke! It is possible to stunlock him, and there's absolutely nothing he can do about it! The Doise is also an amazing encounter to peer rank, because it's basically just... Yet, even after all of that, the noise is a gift that keeps on giving. Because just like with Pepino, if you take the time to pay attention, you'll notice a plethora of amazing details you can see as him. Such as the TV, reflecting unique images as the noise. You have the basic ones such as going fast and getting items. But all transformations also deliver a unique image of the power-ups. He even breaks the fourth wall at times by coming out of the TV. But my favorite part is that they left the easter egg that every 10 hits you get a disturbing image. It's so damn horrifying and cool. The funniest one is the image where he gets his head blown off in the streets. It's like he was shot by the Mexican cartel for insulting Dragon Ball Z. During the escape sequences, Gustavo and Mr. Stick are replaced with a noisy and noise set respectively. 
In gameplay, you might notice that the noise is less scaring than Pepino, as he's capable of destroying the bosses in the hop area. He's the only one who can defeat Grandpa Pepper in Pig City, or Horse in Fast Food Saloon. And in Gnome Forest, he just straight up pushes away the Gnome Pizzas and Gnome Houses. Oh, and speaking of that level, the Noise Goblins are actually friendly and greet you instead of attacking you, it's so cute! The title cards remain mostly the same, but what's so cool about them is that the jingles are replaced with the Noise's iconic whack and a bunch of fan-made noise stickers get put in the cactus's faces. And something really fun is that the noise's nature as a cheater also comes into play many times throughout the adventure. I already mentioned how he breaks refrigerator, refrigerator, refrigerator. But in golf, if you go beyond the Primaberg limit, he will change the required number so no matter what happens, he will always get a Primaberg. And in the vigilante battle during the final quick draw duel, he will just say, nah, Screw this, and shoots the vigilante ahead of time! There's so many cool details to find here! Oh, and in case you're curious, yes, the Oktoberfest easter egg still remains intact. Now, the real question is, is the noise better than Pepino? Honestly, I know this is super obvious, but I think it all comes down to personal preference. Myself, I do love how cracked up the noise is, but it's because of that that I am prone to make mistakes more often. With his speed, floatiness and bounciness, it makes me mess up perfect runs over the most stupid things. And naturally, it's all about the context. Because of the noise's nature and moveset, some levels might be better or worse, or better and worse. Bloods' dungeon, for example. I heard this level was a nightmare to peer and cast the noise, but it actually didn't even take me that long, and his better vertical movement made it a blast. Other levels, like Don't Make a Sound, weren't as fun as before. I felt that Pepino had a better flow in there. Or others, like Gnome Forest, are better because of the noise's tornado. But the secret rooms there are horrible, damn! I can't tell you how many times I lost my P-rank because of them! And so again, whether Pepino or the noise is the better character, that is up to you to decide. Or, you know, why not use both at the same time? Yeah, that's another thing you can do! You can unlock a secret mode that lets you play as Pepino and the noise at the same time. You have one character follow the other like in the Sonic games, but you can swap them at any time like in the Donkey Kong platformers. Using each character's abilities to suit the situation gives you an entirely new rush of excitement I never thought possible. I'm telling you, this update is insane! And really, that's the best thing I can say about this. At first, I wasn't that excited for it because, you know, I already made a video about mods and they were amazing, sure. Remember the Eevee one that had so much detail behind it? I love that one. And since then, I have discovered that more mods of the same caliber have come out, like a My Little Pony one and even an Asumanga Dayo mod. Yes, I just said that. But the noise update goes far beyond a new coat of paint. I genuinely believe that his inclusion breeds even more life to the game, and honestly, that's quite a feat. P ranking all the levels once again brought me the same adrenaline I felt in 2023. But that's not all. I was constantly laughing, discovering new things, and getting excited all over again. Like, even if I were to compare this update to my favorite platformers of all time, it still comes out on top. Super Mario World, Mario and Luigi play exactly the same. Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze, the other characters are basically upgrades to your moveset and more health. A great idea, honestly. Celeste? Every level has its own gimmick, but Madeline is still the only playable character. I think the closest comparison I can make is Knuckles in Sonic 3, because he's able to take exclusive routes to him and change the overall experience. But even then, the noise is still a few levels above that. It's an update I didn't think I needed. But by the end of it, it made me say, yeah, no, I don't care, Pizza Tower Game of the Year once again! How does it keep getting away with it? Oh my god! So now tell me, what do you guys think about the noise? Do you prefer him over Pepino? Which levels are better or worse because of him? Please let me know in the comments and while you're at it, thank you so much for your time, I really hope you enjoyed the video! And if you could support the channel, you know, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, or Patreon, 
that will be a massive help for me. And more than anything, I know most of you are here for the Pizza Tower content, but I don't know, it will really mean a lot to me if you could also check my other non-Pizza Tower videos. The game is amazing, like, <laughs> make no mistake, it's a masterpiece I love making videos about. But I also love talking about other games, trust me, they are just as amazing as Pizza Tower, but for different reasons. Check them out, I'm sure you're not gonna regret it, and you might find new games worth trying. So, <laughs> yeah, have a wonderful day, and take care, I'll see you next time!